Well, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Victory Square Technologies a channel, building the next tech giants. Joining us is Chief Executive Officer Shafin Tajani. Welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me. So we got a lot to get into. You guys got earnings drops. There's a lot of news that I want to get into, but I guess first and foremost, we'll look at the interim filings that you guys just came out with because you were sitting on 52 plus million in assets with virtually no debt, which I think is funny because you're actually trading below uh, your market cap value right now, which I think was around 44 million last time I looked, but really interesting with that. And I also noticed that you guys had a, a bit of a, uh, you know, a revenue decrease. I noticed the gross margins going from 538K to about 460K for the nine month. And do you mind just kind of giving us some insights here for any new retail investors kind of stumbling into this? Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. So the, you know, kind of one of the best you know, KPIs to look at for, for Victory Square is our, our assets. Um, our business model is all based on you know, uh, buying, building, or investing in early uh, in these innovative tech companies and growing, building, and kind of spinning them uh, out and uh, our ability to use our cash and increase the you know the value of those assets and, and, and you know prove that ROI is really kind of the, the VST model. So it's not a revenue based model. Um, and there's really two numbers to kind of look at the you know the the book value of our assets and our net asset value. From a book value perspective, I think you'd mentioned the the, the 50, um, 50 million plus. Sorry, I don't have the exact number in front of me. Um, if you look at year over year, that number has increased significantly, and that's a really, really a key indicator um, from a performance perspective. The second is that that number doesn't include the actual true value of some of our assets. So as an example, I think a lot of investors know that uh, we incubated uh, Fantasy 360 Technologies doing business as immersive, ticker is VRAR. Um, and we own about, you know, I think it's 55 million shares in this company and, you know, it's trading around 40 cents. So you're looking at a, a value of over $20 million um, there. That doesn't show up on our book value because it's a controlling interest. Um, and, you know, based on IFRS accounting, um, it doesn't unlock that value. So we kind of internally look at two numbers, the book value of our assets, which are still strong, like you mentioned, our market cap trades below that. And then the second is our, you know, our net asset value, uh, which is kind of un unaudited, which, you know, we have, uh, if you take into account all of our holdings and, and kind of the, the fair market value, you know, we have that number north of uh, 110 uh, million. So those are kind of the best ways to look at the, the, the BST uh, business. And I think, you know, our goal is every three to five years to continue to double that, that NAV number. Yeah, that's uh, pretty incredible. I mean, because you guys are like basically a portfolio of all these future forward uh, looking tech companies in multiple different sectors. Uh, just to dive into a little bit of the other news as well. I noticed that Victory Square signed on a follow on investment in the fourth ranked uh, influencer platform creator code. You want to just kind of uh, dissect that a little bit for us? Yeah, so the creator economy and the creator space is one that we've been, you know, hyper focused on for a number of years. Um, you know, our, our strategy in you know, you can build anything, but if you can't drive users or, or customers, um, you know, your tech is, is, is pointless. And so having, is part of our ecosystem, having a, you know, a creator platform in there is really strategic for all of our portfolio companies, but creator.co is basically a marketplace. Um, so it's where brands can connect with micro-influencers. Uh, there's over 100,000 micro-influencers on the platform. They're growing by about 10,000 influencers um, uh, a month. So this is not only strategic for our entire ecosystem, but you know, on a go forward basis, uh, you know, we're seeing um, the, the creator economy continue to grow and grow and grow. I think what the pandemic did is, um, you know, people were able to work from home, you know, be, build businesses on Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok. Um, and, and, and this is kind of, you know, I think some of these large technology platforms have democratized entrepreneurship uh, globally. Um, with creator.co for us, a, it was very strategic for our ecosystem. B, we see the creator economy continuing to be a big thing. One of the big objectives that we have with them is, you know, building a, a platform uh, that would allow for creators to um, create or mint their own creator coin or social token um, and allow for their audience to, to purchase these tokens for a variety of different, you know, exclusive reasons, you know, you know as, as, as an audience member. Um, but the creator themselves can use these, you know, use the funds that are raised through this uh, program to 
you know, maybe make it, make their, you know, their creator job full time, improve the quality of their production, uh, and grow and scale uh, and become more of a macro influencer, macro creator. And that audience that purchases that creator coin or social token early uh, can benefit over the appreciation of it. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strategic investment for us. It's going to be a big, you know, big key focus. Um, and sorry, one other thing to just note, they've been piloting programs with a lot of the brands uh, on their platform to allow for the brands to create limited runs uh, um, you know, through NFTs uh, for you know, select creators. So creators that may have a large following, you know, using Adidas as an example, there might, a creator might create a unique run of Adidas sneakers uh, and you know, every per person that purchases that would get an NFT in addition to the physical sneaker that's one of you know, a, 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 you know, a select few. Um, and brands are starting to, to engage and use these types of things um, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to be innovative. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of really, really interesting things around that investment and that company as part of VST's focus kind of long-term. Yeah, that's uh, incredible, man. I, you, you can just see how much you're involved in this and just kind of the excitement of everything you're diving down into here. Is, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, on a day like today, especially when we're still kind of having these pandemic fears come around, the vast majority of your portfolio is not only trading below the asset value itself from your market cap, but intriguingly enough, most of these are completely disconnected from like the pandemic itself, right? Like these are things that are should only be widely becoming more and more used and uh, more looked at. I think this was great, man. I really appreciate your time today, Shafin. <laughs> no, thank you. Just, I just want to just point one note to, to, to what you just mentioned. I think we're long term. We have a, a very long term, you know, viewpoint. Um, I think in earlier interviews, I had mentioned that I started the dot com boom, um, and you know, I was young and, and and I had I didn't have the experience. And I think now being able to look back at the last 20, 25 years, uh, to see that you know, this long-term vis vision, like in these innovative spaces that are going to become uh, and dictate kind of what, you know, what things are going to look like 5, 10, 15, 20 years uh, ahead um, and not wavering from it. Because we see in the markets, you'll see these roller coasters, right? You know, booms, busts, you know, whatever. I think for us, we found, we found certain sectors that we think are going to be big. We found really, really good companies with products and teams that we think have a great shot of being successful in those sectors. And we believe those sectors are going to be big long-term. So from our perspective, we don't get wavered by the, you know, the, the share price or the, or the, or the movements. We're really, really focused on, on, on the, the disruptive nature of the portfolio that we have. And we think these are going to be, you know, uh, create asymmetrical returns for us, which will benefit our, our shareholders. And, and so, yeah, we don't, you know, I think, pandemics, recessions, all of these things are happen, happening. You know, we, we factor that these, these things will happen, but we ensure that these businesses are built to be successful and withstand that. Um, so that, you know, like if you had held on to Amazon through all the, the volatility, you know, you would have been a winner. And, and I think we've been able to see uh, and learn from, from that from the past 20 years to really prepare to, to capitalize on, on uh, these windfalls, uh, you know, over the next 20 so. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this is great. If you guys ever have any questions as well, let us know what you think in the comment section below, because this is kind of a, a very vast company to kind of pick apart. So there's lots that you could ask Shafin here. And we got to get together at some point and do a, uh, an investor Q&A, because I just think even myself, I have a lot of questions surrounding this stuff. But in light of this, folks, stay cool, stay awesome, and we'll catch you in the next one.